fantastic turnout mm -hmm. in Manchester. Mm -hmm. um, it gives me encouragement and it gives other families encouragement to see that people are coming out. They're seeing what is happened to our loved ones and they're quite prepared to stand up to the police. Um, I'm sure, I, well, maybe not, um, but a lot of people might have seen what happened to Christopher in 1998. Christopher was an ex-paratrooper. He's fought in the Falklands, and you would have thought that he'd have been given a little bit more respect than he'd been given by the state. He went to a nightclub one night with his friends. There'd been a carry-on inside, which spilled outside. He'd been punched. Now we all know that this type of thing happens every Friday and Saturday night in towns and cities around Britain and people are still alive. Um, he was put into the recovery position by the hospital staff. Then um, an ambulance was called and he was taken to the hospital as a complainant in an assault. The police arrived about 10-15 minutes later. Christopher had banged the back of his head, he ended up with a hematoma this size on the back of his head. And we all know that if you have a head injury, it causes possible cerebral irritation. So your behaviour might change drastically. Plus, you know, you'd be mighty pissed off when you've got two coppers coming in, pushing you about when you've just, you know what I mean, been injured. Well, they didn't allow him to have any treatment or leave him alone. They started pushing him about within the hospital dragging him to the, um, to the toilets, leaving the toilet door open while he's urinating, threatening to CS gas him, and eventually, without consul consulting the hospital staff, they dragged Christopher out of that hospital backwards with his feet trailing. Now they had said in the investigation that Christopher walked out in between them and all the hospital staff had said he'd been dragged out physically backwards with his feet trailing. So once he gets outside, he's fully compassmentous and he speaks to the security guard. He says, Molly, I'll see you tomorrow. And he's also asking for the coppers' uh, names and numbers because he's obviously not happy with the treatment that he's had of them. One of the coppers said, you'll get my name and number in five minutes. He stepped into that back of the van, fully compassmentous, Speaking very clearly, and a supposed five minute journey to the police station, Christopher come out fully unconscious, with his trousers and box shorts down to his knees, handcuffed behind his back. You can see on the video where they drag him in and his head's limp and they're just dragging him. As soon as they get inside, the police are already making excuses. <laughs> Oh, he was, he was standing up to us and he, he went like this when he was outside, outside the hospital and whatsoever. And then they just place him on the floor in his front. He's still handcuffed behind his back, <coughs> still got his trousers down. And he's, he can't, you can hear him, he can't breathe. He's absolutely rasping for his voice for some breath. <clears throat> the police officer stood around talking, chatting trying to find some excuse to charge him with a more severe charge than to prevent a breach of the peace. Obviously because they know the condition that is in. You've got officers saying, when he comes round and we find out who he is, it's not going nowhere. Shall we put him in the foyer, but it's not going to go anywhere? Christopher dies on the floor, 11 minutes. His breathing is louder than the police officers talking. And all they can think about is how they can protect themselves. I saw more than what they tried to make out to me on that video. Because this was my brother. So I saw the body language of the police officers wiping the brow. Looking at each other. And you could tell that there was more to it than meets the eye. But we was only given 11 minutes of that video evidence. And we didn't get given that video evidence until two years later. They had the control, the system, the Crown Prosecution, the Police Complaints Authority had control of my family's emotions for two years. And when we go 
at the Post Martin report, there was nothing in that Post Martin report that said that Christopher shouldn't have been walking about till this day. Inconclusive. The same type of excuse that they used time and time again were people that have been murdered by the police. We don't know how they've died, but they can dig up Tutankhamun and they know how he's died. <laughs> Medical knowledge goes backwards when you're not killed by the police. I honestly thought after seeing that horrific video that the CPS would do the right thing. So, because they were panicking, the coroner gave us all the evidence. But they bombarded it with loads of witness statements, about 400 witness statements about what happened at the nightclub. I was interested in what had happened when he'd left that police, uh, that hospital. They tried to bombard us with all these evidence about what had happened at the nightclub. I just threw all that aside. Then I started looking at the witness statements of the police. And I honestly thought that the CPS were going to do the right thing. So we'd, we'd got a barrister together for an, it's Christopher's inquest. The jury of nine ordinary men and women listened to the evidence, they watched the horrific video, and they came to the same conclusion as me, that Christopher had been unlawfully killed. Now you think unlawful killing, somebody's responsible. And you would think that the CPS, like they'd do if we killed a police officer, would have charged these police officers with gross, gross negligence, manslaughter at the least, Murder at the best. But no, it didn't happen. <laughs> they kept getting all these reports in to cancel any evidence out. So my solicitor went to Northern Ireland. Because what you've got to understand what happens is the Home Office are the first people that bring in their pathologists. So they're already working for the police. So then you get your own independent expert. And unless you get one from out of the country, they're going to just follow suit. Because, you know, I mean, they've no guts to stand on the original pathologist toes. But ours did. And he turned around and he said, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. Look at the video. That man's died due to the way that the police have left him to die. And not give him any first aid, basic first aid. 11 minutes of that video evidence they gave us. And it wasn't until we had an inquest on unlawful killing, then we eventually pushed the CPS to prosecute these police officers with manslaughter. And what did the CPS do? They basically conflicted their own evidence. Meaning, if they want to prove this is an orange in this hand, they would normally take the evidence that fits that and use that to charge the people. They wouldn't take evidence to say it's an apple and conflict it, and that's exactly what they did in the trial. We had to sit there for eight weeks and listen to the CPS do the job of the defense and watch those murdering police officers walk free out of court. But if they thought that I was gonna stop there, they had another thing coming. We're going to blame his friend for the murder. <coughs> if it hadn't have been for me walking into that police station that day, that guy would have been done with murder now. He would have been in jail. They'd gone into Christopher's computer, analysed all the hard drive to see if they could find any shit on him. Then they'd gone right into my family background because we'd all been brought up by the state and care and started. See if we could drag any stuff up about us. So, after these police officers walked out of court, I tried my best to take a civil case. I couldn't at the time find a, a barrister that was going to stand up against the prosecutors of the land and prosecute the prosecutors of the land. So I had to go myself, knowing full well I wouldn't win, 
But the joy I got of having them stood in the dock, answering questions to me for 13 years. We didn't stop there. We then took them to the European Court and the government, and that was the consecutive government to this one, had lied and lied and lied. They'd done review after investigation after review because they wanted to convince the public, yeah, that Christopher had just died on the floor and they didn't know anything about it. It was all an accident. <coughs> when I got that video evidence, it was 108 minutes video evidence. The police officers were making monkey and chimpanzee noises, references to the Ku Klux Klan, and speaking about having hoods on and banana boats. The CPS knew this evidence was there. The reason they didn't bring this evidence because that evidence would have convicted them. It would have shown the reason why they'd done what they'd done to my brother. Because the police are racist. Yeah. Yeah. We got to the European Court of Human Rights and the government at the last minute admitted that they failed to do any <coughs> thorough investigation. Christopher's death was caused by racism and it was inhumane and degrading the way they left him to die. And that took 14 years. 14 years of my life, 14 years of my family's life. I then thought to myself, right, Janet, you've got to start trying to repair your life a bit. You've been able to highlight Christopher's case, what they thought was meant nothing, what they were quite prepared to sweep under the carpet. You have now let the public see just what happens when the police murder. But then in two, we buried Christopher, at least we thought we did in 2000. We had a really good funeral, he was an ex-paratrooper, we brought the army in. People had come from all over the country and that lot to show him the respect that this state did not give him. Only to find out in 2011, they'd swapped his body for a 77 year old woman. They had made my family go for a funeral and bury a 77 year old woman. They hid him away in six body bags in an old mortuary for 11 years. And now they've tried to make out as if nobody knew he was there. Christopher was in a body bag with that woman's name on. It said Grace Kamara on the bag. When the police did the investigation and they assumed the body of Grace Kamara we buried, her name was on that body bag, which means the funeral director, the mortuary staff, were well aware that in 2000, they were given Grace Kamara's body and not Christopher. But it didn't stop there. When the police came to see me, they were so cocky as hell, and I mean really cocky. I knew there was gonna be no investigation I knew they were mocking everything that had happened. And they turned around and they said that um, a policewoman had approached them and she said that she'd seen Christopher's body after the funeral because the police were using his body for training purposes. That is the disrespect they show us as ordinary people. Yeah. And we have a right to stand up. We have a right to the truth. And we have a right to be fearless of these people. Because unless we do stand up, because we are powerless people, and unless we stand up, this place is going to get like America, because it follows America in everything. That is what they are leading up to now. 
This is why you've seen all these remarks during the, the shootings. They want you to accept it. They want it like America, where they can just pop you off and nobody says anything. But the only way we're going to stop this is by people getting together. Whenever anybody is touched by the police, everybody goes in and makes a complaint. Everybody protests outside. Because the more that happens, the more these people are going to get worried that they better watch what they're doing with our loved ones. I already knew that I was being followed in 2000. Uh, in 1998, when I first went round, but they denied it and said, no, no, no. The PCA, the IPCC, there's no evidence. Because what they try and do, they try and make it out to the public that you're crazy. Yeah? She's going on about, I mean, she, you know, can't she just shut up about it, whatever. And they do it time and time again. They don't just demonise your loved one. Yeah? They try and demonise the family. But in 2013 it came out that I had been followed. But once again, they're coming away with an excuse again. We only, you only got followed at the inquest, Janet. No, I was followed from 1998 till now, probably. No, you only got followed and it, you was going back. I said, so, right, okay. All I did, go to court, go and get a sandwich, go back to court. I said, so what were they doing? Going to the sandwich shop. She's eating a chicken sandwich. She's eating it the wrong way. <laughs> he then turned around and says to me, he says, um, oh, um, one, of the, one of the guys that's authorised it, one of the police officers that's authorised it, he turned around and said, he didn't put any authorisation on your family or your legal team. It was because of the inquest. He was concerned about the inquest, so he wanted the inquest monitored. I said, well, well if, that, if he thought he had a valid reason, why was he doing it undercover? But this is the extent they will go to. And this is all of us that are susceptible to this. All our families are. And we need to unite together and really make a movement in this country. Yeah? yeah? These people need to learn that we're not going to put up with it. Thank you.